just a bit at times. High temperatures ranging from 65 to 69, east northeast, at wind at 10 to 20. Not going to be a real nice day tomorrow. Sunday going to be a forbidden rice risotto with lobster. And this is the chi this is the Chinese forbidden rice. It's actually the recipe that we're going to give the people. We actually cook the rice in a lobster stock. So if you ate this, the rice would actually taste like lobster. Mm -hmm. So what we did was we started off with a little bit of pancetta. Um, which is the Italian version of a bacon. Right. And we rendered that out with some garlic, some red onion for sweetness, some carrot, Smells and good. Um, some Let's mushrooms. Let's help our photographer out just a bit by tipping the pan a little there bit. There you go. There we go. How's That's that the comrade? mixture Frank is talking about. And then once this renders down, you can see everything starts to glisten. Then we're going to add a little bit of the rice. That looks funny, but is it soft? It this has already been cooked. Okay. It's blanched and it's cooked for about 30 minutes. And it doesn't lose its texture. It's a very nutty flavor. There is no starch in the rice. Mm. Uh, it has a really wonderful aroma to it. And once again, like I said, everything's going to have a lobster flavor. Now, once we have the rice incorporated, the next thing I'm going to do is add something. You can see the color of this has a beautiful mm -hmm. black hue to it. Mm -hmm. This is a mixture of heavy cream and lobster stock reduced, so it's got that has that orange color looks to like it. Looks like pancake mix. Almost it, looks like a bisque. But this, right. have this for breakfast in your car. Have that in your coffee <laughs> in the morning. Add a little bit of cream. Because what happens, because the lobster, because the risotto doesn't, the rice doesn't have any starch, we have to add a little bit of starch to it or some thickening. And that's where we added the heavy cream. You can actually, you can actually smell the, 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 the lobster as it comes out right now. Ooh. You can smell the lobster aroma. So let's go add a little bit more. You know we like to use Just heavy cream in our bit. Go for it, Frank. It's opening day. Okay, okay. <laughs> opening day for them all. There we go. Truth the works. What's a little bit? What's a calorie month's Frank? We need some hot sauce. Where's the hot sauce? I gave you a gallon of hot sauce. You bring it in. Where is it? I think you're watering your plants with that stuff. <laughs> some chopped scallion, right. just for some texture. And then, Nicole, this is for you, Ooh, lobster. Yes, yes, yes. had yes. the hot dogs. So how did you night. make that? Was this boiled, this was boiled. No, this was boiled. Boiled, all right. Boiled, mm -hmm. six minutes. Look at all the lobster meat going all in there. Right. And we're just gonna move this around, and then I'm gonna plate it, and just give it, with that. yep. That's a beautiful plate, I like that. That's my china. Isn't that Did you buy this here at the mall, this plate? <laughs> no, that was Pottery actually... Barn. What do we have Crate and here? Barrel. Nordstrom. Whatever. Now, this is one of the companies that I do some work for. They <laughs> right, send me okay. all the china, so... All right. Okay? Go and ahead. all I'll do is just that add a nice... That smells so good. It's got a beautiful, nice mm. color to it. That's low fat, right, Chef? Low fat. There's no fat right. in here. Believe right. me. Frank, I understand that we picked this because it's a Renaissance theme. This is the Renaissance. Renaissance city. Yep. And what we're going to do is finish it off. We might as well... The mayor's comments have ignited a fiery debate in this city. You go out on the streets and talk to people. Many agree with the mayor, saying there is too much public housing. The controversy surrounds the timing. Why is he saying it just three weeks before the primary? Holly Rebello has lived in the Watapa Heights housing project for two years. I think the mayor should learn what it's like to live on a small fixed income. She and her neighbors call the mayor's comments dangerous. What's going to happen is that if he gets his way and knocks down this place, there's not going to be any homeless shelters for anybody. Because I should know, I lived in one for four and a half months before coming in here. And we're going to have a lot of families out on the streets. We need places like this. Yeah, he's got a nice home. Hey, yeah, he might have worked hard for it, but we're trying to build up so we can have a nice home like he does. Mayor Ed Lambert says there's just too much public housing in the Spindle City. He says the thousands of people that live here are contributing to overcrowded schools and crime. He says it's time for many of these places to go. I'm quite disturbed on the fact of the action that he has taken. Richard Riveros is the executive director of Fall Rivers Housing Authority. He seems to think that the housing authority is advertising to bring people, outsiders, into the city. That's, that's not so. Vivero says he's already cut 300 low-income units over the past decade. But what he won't do is slam the door on outsiders. I had to ask for a list of where other people are coming from. Do we ask for a list of the influent people, the affluent people that are coming here, where they're coming from, where they live? Well, who's he going after? The senior citizen, the disabled, the disabled vet? You know, in this city, we all know that there is excess of housing, and we know that we have got to do something about it. But you don't just run for a headline. But it's come to the point now where it's very noticeable in the community, and a majority of the people in Fall River, I'm convinced, realize that we have more public housing than we need here in the city, and that is failed public housing policy. Now, the mayor says there's nothing strange to the timing here. He says he's been talking about downsizing public housing for the past three and a half years. Problem, he says, it hasn't received any publicity. 
Lambert says the Fall River Housing Authority uh, benefits financially by having low-income housing, getting a million dollars in administrative costs and a percentage of all Section 8 housing. In the meantime, the mayor is calling for a task force to evaluate what, what low-income housing they need and then start downsizing from there. We're live in Fall River. Paul McGonigal, News Channel 10. Okay, thank you very much. The people who live there are contributing to overcrowded schools and crime. Lambert's comments have the housing authority and some public housing tenants a bit worried. We need places like this. Yeah, he's got a nice home. Hey, yeah, he might have worked hard for it, but we're trying to build up so we can have a nice home like he does. But it's come to the point now where it's very noticeable in the community and a majority of the people in Fall River, I'm convinced, realize that we have more public housing than we need here in the city, and that is failed public housing policy. Bill Whitty, who is running for mayor, agrees there is a problem, but he says Lambert is not handling it well. You're watching Media One Metro News. It's primary day in Fall River, and voters are narrowing the field for the general election. Good evening, I'm Jim Phillips. I'm Pamela to 18 candidates. Join us at 8 p.m. for live primary election coverage. Jim? Some mayoral endorsements are creating political fireworks this election season. Several Fall River labor organizations recently endorsed mayoral contender Bill Whitty. You can bet the leadership of those unions were more than a bit surprised when they saw their unions listed in a newspaper ad endorsing Mayor Ed Lambert. The ad was put out by the Fall River Labor Council. The unions in question are members of the council, but they're not endorsing the mayor. Fall River Labor Council endorses Mayor Fine. But to list the affiliates, when they know for a fact that there's quite a few of us who are opposed to the mayor, who are backing Bill Woody, is just a shame. It shouldn't have been done. It's very deceiving, and it's wrong. This ad was put in because it deceives the public and makes them think that, uh, that the firefighters uh, endorse Ed Lambert. It was an over. They plan to change the bylaws if necessary so that a similar controversy won't erupt again. Two New Bedford men are going to prison for selling cocaine. A Superior Court jury deliberated about four hours today before returning guilty verdicts against 25-year-old Efren Hernandez and 25-year-old Carlos Vidaire. Judge Richard... Court of Public Housing were duped out of having their say. The Fall River Housing Authority met yesterday in the O'Brien apartment building, but not in the room tenants and advocates thought it would be. The Fall River Housing Commissioners met instead in a small conference room while everyone else was in the community room. That's where meeting goers said they were told commissioners would speak about the Watapa Heights, Pleasant View, and Maple renovation projects. They hightailed it out of here. They knew they were going to be outnumbered. They knew there was going to be a very large work to my apartment. I'm in no rush. Last month, three out of five commissioners voted to hold off on accepting $9 million in state renovation money, considering instead to tear down the dilapidated homes. The authority voted yesterday to wait until they met with the Housing Authority and Community Development, and then they'll decide the fate of the unions. Fall River Housing Director Richard Viveris broke the news to the angry crowd. Let's not close the door on a situation of the board going up to DHCD and, uh, and speaking out. My position isn't changing. My position is the way it's been all the time, is to thin out to give it a better quality of life and not to demolish total total units. The next housing meeting is scheduled for October 8th. It's Stewart's eyes. Only $10 million to renovate low-income housing. Now residents are wondering why nothing has been done yet. The meeting addressed the issue tonight. ABC6 reporter John DeLuca was there. When it rains, there is raw sewage in the basement. When it's cold, there are drafts and no heat. These are just some of the living conditions at Patricia Thompson's Watapa Heights home. To clean the basement out, they put pine saw down and say, y'all just call us when you smell it again. That stinks and it's nasty, it's health hazard, and it's against the law. You know, why do we have to pay rent to live in a dump? Patricia was one of the hundred or so low-income residents confronting the Fall River Housing Authority Monday night. At issue is $9.9 million in state aid that was allocated for the city's housing projects at Pleasant View and Watapa Heights. The tenants want the money to fix up their homes. 
but some board members want a study done before the money is spent. And there's a lot of um, controversial issues as to the number of vacant units, as to the number of units now that they've moved people in and out of for modernization purposes. And I've 